Hey everyone, so I'm going to be doing my video just now about the Doctor Who Christmas special this year and I'll be honest, I don't really know where to start with this. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that all day I've been like really excited for this. I've been counting down like 5 hours to go, 4 hours to go, 3 hours to go, so on until it came to the time, you know, Geronimo time to go away. Hey, um, I, I will be honest, at the beginning, it was quite slow progressing for me. I think it wasn't until about 15, 20 minutes in that my heart finally connected with it and I really sort of thought actually, you know, you know what, this is a good episode, it is going to be quite good. The plot is quite nice. The fact that there's no weird alien type creatures in it, like there's no, I don't use the Daleks as an example because I, I love Daleks, but there's no like Prisoner Zero type creatures, no really creepy things, although the shark is a bit creepy. Um, the fact that it focuses on Kazran is quite nice. Obviously the Doctor has to go and pretend to be the ghost of Christmas past and try and change Kazran's past to make him more of a nice person in the present to stop to change the clouds so the spaceship can do a proper land and the 4,003 people on the spaceship do not die. Of course, trying to change somebody's entire past and make them go from basically nasty to nice is, is going to be a really big challenge for anybody. When you have other things to battle with, like big massive sharks who are going to eat the end of your screwdriver, it's not. It's going to make it a lot more complicated. So the plot itself is really quite nice and quite unique because the Doctor is always warning people that they cannot change the past and they, they can't ta they can't temper with the past because you know it'll rewrite history and that can't happen. That that was stressed very much with Rose. Rose seemed to want to change the past a lot. Um, so the fact that the Doctor is now willingly going to change the past for the good of the present, I really like that and it makes it quite different and it just mixes things up a little bit. And so the plot itself was really nice, really different and once it got into the swing of things it was really enjoyable. There was one thing that really annoyed me, it was the fact that there wasn't a lot of Amy and Rory in this. They were in it at the beginning, they were in it at the end. Not much of them in the middle. Now I love Amy especially, obviously the fact that she's called Amy and she's in Doctor Who, brilliant. But Amy and Rory together as characters, the way they work together, I really like that. And I also like the way Amy and the Doctor work. And today I noticed something, I made a little analogy, and it's probably something that everybody else has already noticed, but it's, it's just took me a while. While the, Ro the Rose, while the Doctor and Rose are my favourite pairing altogether, um, I am biased, but that is the way it's going to be. I think as far as comedy goes, as far as humour goes, the Doctor and Amy are the best pairing. They have so much comedy going on between them, so many one-liners and little conversations they have. I never really laughed that much with Rose and the Doctor. It was always, you know, miserable tears. I was always devastated with Rose and the Doctor. But with Amy and the Doctor, it, it's really amusing, really funny, and makes it more, quite frankly, enjoyable to watch. I would be, I, I hate to admit that, but I actually prefer to watch the Doctor and Amy than I do the Doctor and Rose. Um, Rose is always going to be my favourite companion, but there we go. Um, and also Amy and Rory as well are really funny. Matt Smith, Again, I don't want to say this because David will always be my doctor, but in this episode I finally realised that Matt is hysterical as the doctor. His, his, um, his delivery is fantastic with his lines, perfect comedy timing. Just a very, very funny man in general. Um, I don't want to say he looks funny because he, he doesn't look funny as such, but he does have a sort of peculiar image going on and his obsession with bow ties and the fez and things and it's really cute and really different. Um, I did say if you watched my the 11th hour video that I thought Matt was a bit like David as in he's watched David's Doctor and picked all the good bits out of David's Doctor but an entire series later I can now say Matt is his own Doctor. The 11th Doctor, in, this is the one episode that has made me feel like the 11th Doctor is now a Doctor in his own right and Matt has earned the title. So that is what that is the thing I like most about this episode. As I said, the plot itself is really good, but what this episode has given me is it's made me see the light for these characters and just how much I actually love these characters because I never realised how much I needed this new Doctor. I was devastated when David left, but the, I, it's really hard to explain if you're not in the same like sort of wavelength as me. But what's Dave, what David's Doctor did for me was left me pining for Rose to come back it made it all about emotion and the, and the love the Doctor carried for Rose. Whereas now, I can enjoy the stories, I can enjoy the alien creatures, I can enjoy all the other little characters that come into it and not think about when Rose is next going to appear in it. Um, so that, that 
I really like the fact that this episode has given me all this new information, which probably was already there, but it's taken me a long time to realise it, and Matt's performance especially in this episode has made me realise that, so thank you Matt. And the cast was really good, obviously um, Arthur as Rory, absolutely fantastic. The fact that he was still dressed as an autumn is brilliant. I'm starting to forget what he looked like in normal clothes, because it's been a long time. Um, but I love the fact that he was dressed as the autumn and Amy was dressed as um, the strippogram, the, yeah, kissogram, whatever she was, so I really, really like that. Um, um, Kazran, Michael Gambon, of course, we had two sort of celebrities in this episode, Michael Gambon played Kazran. As soon as I heard um, Gambon was going to be in this, I was like, brilliant, this is going to be fantastic. And then the said Catherine Jenkins is going to be in it, and um, she plays Abigail, of course, and I was like, Okay, I'm not the biggest fan of Catherine Jenkins. I love her voice, I could listen to her music all day, but as a person I've just never seemed to gel with her. The, I mean her personality, not, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just not there for me, you know what I mean? But I have to give her credit for this. Fantastic performances, Abigail, very beautiful scenes. Um, I do think it was down to the casting of Kazran, the young Kazran and the middle Kazran more so. But it did work, and her voice definitely um, made this made the episode as beautiful as it was. Um, young Kazran was played by Lawrence Belcher, or Belcher, as the Tesco advert says. Um, brilliant little actor, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of him. He's done a few things, it seems, but um, I hope he's going to. I hope he's going to be in another Doctor Who episode. I can see that happening. Um, middle Kazran was played by um, Danny Horn. As far as IMDB goes, he's not been in anything else, but absolutely fantastic actor. And the first thing I thought when I saw him, he's going to make a brilliant doctor. I can see him, and I don't know why I thought this, but as soon as I saw Danny Horn as middle Kazran, I just thought he's going to be the next doctor. I can really see him being the 12th doctor. Of course I've only seen him in the one role, so he might be totally different in other roles and other situations. But first impressions he'd make a good doctor. Um, let me know if you agree with that, I'd be interested to see if anybody else agrees. Um, the, uh, the, 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 it was directed by Tony Haynes, a name that I've heard, Toby Haynes, a name that I've heard of, kind of, a little bit, but it's not sort of like, he's not my favourite director, so I'm kind of a bit like, Ugh. because I really do like this episode because it's given me so much insight that I was hoping it was going to be directed by somebody I really loved. Um, but that's not a problem because now all that means is that there is a new director who could possibly be weaving his way towards the very top of my favourite directors list where there's two or three sitting up there. Um, written by Stephen Moffat and obviously if you know an episode written by Stephen you know it is going to be fantastic. It's it's inevitable, of course it is. Um, so that is brilliant. Now I'm just like sort of squinting, like squinting, scanning through my notes because I wrote down a few quotes that happened and a few particular things that really made me go yay! Um, at the beginning, when it came up on the screen, Come Along Pond, um, that I really loved that bit. Brilliant sort of beginning, kind of. Um, I really loved that. And then he said Geronimo, and I'm forever, if you follow me on Facebook, I'm forever just doing status updates that just say Geronimo. So that was like, yeah, I love that. That's another little sort of Matt Smith 11th Doctor thing, which I really love. Um, and my favourite quote, I think, out of the whole thing, but is when he said qu um, he, he used quantum unfolding and a paper clip. It, it's sort of like that whole um, wibbly wobbly timey wimey thing that David does. It's where it gets all sciencey and then basic. And I really like that. I really like the contrast there. The way that's sort of juxtaposed. I really do like that. And the fact that it's the humour that Matt brings to it as well makes it even more amazing. I think is the only word I can say this. So what I'm trying to say is what this episode has done for me is made Matt Smith edge his way closer to being my favourite doctor. David Tennant will always be my doctor regardless of what happens. David's doctor will always be my favourite doctor because he brought me Doctor Who, he brought me my love for the show, he brought me Billy Piper and the Zikrax and the Daleks and the Krill Chain and whatever. But taking that out of consideration, if say I, I fell in love with Eccleston's doctor first but then thought David's doctor was better, then Matt Smith might actually have first place. So if I didn't have the history with the 10th Doctor, I think Matt's Doctor would be first. I think he's not better for the role. I don't want to say he's better for the role, but I just think this episode has proved 
just how perfect Matt is and I know that goes against everything I said initially with my first opinions because I didn't want him as the doctor and I've just my, my opinion is just 360 you know I cannot believe how much I love this man as the doctor um yes there we go that's my sort of um my brief opinion on this episode and things the greatest thing about as I said is how much information and love it's given me for the current the current doctor the current current companions and everything like that so yeah so please feel free to leave comments and things and let me know your thoughts on this episode um I, I am a bit devastated that's taken me this long to realize and properly fall in love with it I mean Series 5 I did love, you know, if you've seen my reviews you'll know that I really did love them and there were some episodes which I, you know, fell in love with straight away. But now I'm completely in love with Eleven and Amy. Completely. As I said, nobody will beat Ten and Rose, but this is pretty close. So there we are. Um, I hope you've all had a really lovely Christmas. I will be doing another Doctor Who video next week, another episode review next week. Um, and I will be reviewing the top prompts which I got today um, in a couple of days time but please feel free to leave comments, requests etc and your views and your thoughts on this episode and I will see you next time. Bye guys!